first thing after the break that I would like to do together with you is uh, turn the bars to red if we are in a critical temperature area. How can we do that? And this is, as I said, something new, which you haven't heard so far. Essentially, we are going to use a mechanism in XAML, which is called a trigger. What is a trigger? I will just type it in and probably you can guess the rest from the context. We'll see. Please go into the style area of our bar chart. And here we can use a style.triggers. See that one? A trigger is a so-called data trigger. We are focusing on data triggers now. There are other triggers in WPF, which we are not going into any details here. But data trigger is the, in my opinion, easiest one to learn. Here we can say uh, which variable we want to reference in the trigger. We do that in the binding area. So let's do the binding here. And let's bind to is critical. We are not getting IntelliSense here. Don't worry that you got, don't get IntelliSense. XAML is a dynamic language. It doesn't understand what you are going to bind here. That is something where Visual Studio can't help you, at least not in the way that we have configured it. So uh, you have to know the name of the property. This is critical, just so that we make it very clear, is this is critical that we get out of our temperature sensor. So this is critical, is the property that we are binding exactly here. And then we can specify a value. This value in our case is true. So if it is critical, then we can now see what I'm doing. I'm copying the fill setter and just set, change it to red. And that's all we need to do. So if the value is critical, is equals to true, then we are overriding the property value up here with the property value red. And that is all we have to do. If we run it, we will hopefully see, yes, we will hopefully see that critical values are now red. As you can see, the first one was random value which was critical and as you can see it's now critical 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 once once we reach the normal temperature area everything is fine and when the temperature is getting too hot it's red again and the sinus curve is going down and we become green again so this is what we do with a data trigger a data trigger allows us to change the formatting of an element depending on a certain property value and in our case, we are going to on to, to the is critical value. And there we specify when it's true, turn to red. Unfortunately, we cannot specify an expression here. So we couldn't say if the value is greater than 90% of something. That is not true. We have to add a constant here. And therefore, it was important that in my temperature sensor, I have an already calculated value indicating whether the temperature reading is in the critical area. I couldn't just put the value in the temperature reading collection and then say here expression greater than something or great lower than something. That is simply not possible. We have to add a constant here. That is a drawback of data triggers, but it is like it is. There are other possibilities which are more advanced, uh, but I think for our simple scenarios, this, uh, this, the, what, what we did here essentially did the trick. Okay. So data triggers are really nice. And of course you can use that in classical business applications too. You can change the font size. You can change the font color. You can change the font from regular to italic or bold, or you can do whatever you want. These data triggers allow you to change the styling of the elements based on the data that is currently bound. Any questions regarding the data trigger? Simple and powerful. Would that be possible in another UI technology that you already know and have learned in this course, meaning Angular? Yes, of course. 
Angular understands so-called class bindings and style bindings. The syntax is different, but essentially the, the concept is the same. By using a style binding or a class binding, you can change the styling or the CSS classes of an element based on properties of the data bound data. So uh, you see there is an underlying, uh, 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 there, is a, there, there is a common set of functionality in all UI technologies because some requirements are just there. Uh, Angular makes some things a little bit easier. With Angular style bindings and class bindings, you can use expressions. This is, as I said, not possible here in XAML. Good, nice. Now the next thing, and the next thing again is a little bit more complicated and new. So we are still in the new area. The first hour was characterized by repetition and the second hour now is characterized by new stuff. We have a major problem here. If we run our app again and wait a little bit until we have some values here, it will quickly fill up the screen. Then if you take a look, if I change the size of my window, the bar chart always remains the same height. So, so let's do it like that. The height of my chart has a maximum height of 300 pixel. And why did we have 300 pixel? Because I accidentally chose the amplitude of our randomly generated values at 300. Of course, that is not a coincidence. I have chosen 300 because it looks nicely on the screen. But imagine what would happen if we change our temperature sensor a little bit. Let's say the amplitude is now 5. If I run it again, I will get a nice little chart. It will work like a charm, but the chart is so small that we don't see a lot of, uh, that we don't really see it. Why? Because now our chart is suddenly only 5 pixels high. What we essentially want is we want our chart to scale to the full available height. So what I want is I want to scale the chart to the full height that is available, independent of the amplitude. If I make my window larger, the chart should be higher. If I make my window smaller, the chart should be smaller. But essentially, I want to display a chart based on the ratio and not based on the concrete value of the temperature. I hope you got the point. Yeah? Please change the amplitude back to 300. That was just for demo purposes, so you understand the problem that we have here. So essentially what we have to do is we have to do a calculation. We cannot simply say height equals to value. Here, exactly here, we need some logic. Here we need to implement some logic. Logic that uh, calculates height of bar based on, based on what? Based on first the temperature value, we have the value, and secondly, based on the available height on the screen. So it's a kind of conversion that's going on. We are converting the temperature value into the number of pixels. And we want to do that based, as I said, on the available height. And when the available height of the window changes, of course, then the value, uh, then the number of pixels also have to change. Okay, this is our problem. Now, in a technology like Angular, you could use an expression here. So directly in the template of the user interface, you could add calculation. In XAML, when Microsoft designed that, they said, we don't want to have that. We do not want to have business logic or expressions in XAML. Whenever something is calculated, we want to have that in C-sharp and we want to force our developers to put those calculation logic into code 
and not here into the template. The template should just set the structure of the user interface. And in C Sharp, we do the calculations. So therefore, we cannot do something like value divided by something, multiplied by something, something like this simply doesn't work. It will break our data binding. We have to do something in C Sharp. Now I told you that our business logic needs two parameters. It needs on the one hand side the temperature that has to be calculated or converted. And it, the second parameter is the available height of the, um, of the items control. So we have two parameters. For that, XAML switches from a binding, which always has a single parameter, to a different binding, which is called a multi-binding. And multi-bindings can have multiple parameters, not just like a binding, which always binds to a single value, but multi-bindings bind to multiple values. And then we can add to the multi-binding a so-called multi-value multi converter, which allows us to convert these multiple binding values to an output value, in our case, the height, okay? So multi-binding is the new thing that we are going to learn here. Before we specify the multi-binding, let's implement the converter. Let's implement the type converter, the temperature converter, which converts multiple values into the height of the rectangle, okay? Let's do that. As I told you, whenever we have to add logic, we are forced to do it in C-sharp. That's a conceptual difference between Angular and XAML. XAML, I repeat myself, but I do that consciously. XAML forces us to put logic into C-sharp, while Angular would allow us to put this logic into the template. In other reactive languages, like for instance, React or Flutter, that wouldn't be a problem because there is no real separation of the template and the view because we have the kind of view template built into the language. We have it mixed. So there we don't have this distinction, but with template based languages like Angular or uh, UI frameworks like Angular or XAML, there has to be this clear distinction. So let's add here a new class and let's call this class temp Temperature converter. Please make it public. Now XAML has an interface for that. I told you it's called a multi-value converter because we are converting multiple values into one target and therefore we have an interface which is called I multi-value converter. Here you see it. This is the interface that we have to implement. I multi-value converter. And again, this multi-value converter will, let's write it up here, converts a temperature to the height of the bar chart. Okay, so let's make an example here, remarks, e.g. If we have a temperature of, let's say, 250 and an amplitude of 300, that would mean, I will do it really slowly so that everybody can follow along. So if we calculate 250 divided by 300, we have 83.3%. We get a ratio of 83.3%. Okay, this is what we get. And if we have, if we have an available height of e.g. 500 pixel, the height should become what? 500 multiplied by 83.3 percentage. And that will be 416.6 pixels. 416.6 pixels. That is the logic that we have to implement. So we take the temperature 
divided by the amplitude, so we get the ratio. And then we take the ratio and multiply it with the maximum height of the bar. That is the maximum available height on the screen. And therefore, we get the height of the bar. Okay, very simple math. But this sample should, um, to a certain degree, uh, illustrate what we have to do. Does anybody have a question regarding the business logic that we have to implement? Maybe business logic is not the correct word. Let's call it view logic because it's logic not related to business rules, but related to view. Okay, no questions. So let's implement the interface. Uh, you can use the light bulb here to generate the necessary methods. Just click on implement interface and you will get a stub of the methods. And as you can see, a multi-value converter can convert the two values, temperature and available height, into a target value. And it also could convert it back. But in our case, convert back can be ignored because we have only a binding from C sharp into XAML, but there, uh, the, the user cannot manipulate these things. So a binding back doesn't make sense. So we can ignore the convert back. It's never used. This is the interesting part here. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Alles klar. Very done. End wrong. Okay. Good. So let's take a look at this multi-value converter, what it can do. It gives us the input values here in an array. So in our case, the input value in this array at index zero will be the temperature and at index one, it will be the maximum available height. And as you can see, because this is generically usable, the type is object, so we have to do some type casting. Then XAML will tell us what the target type should be. In our case, that will be double because we are going to uh, convert it to a double value. We have a parameter here. We could use this parameter for the maximum temperature. So to, for the amplitude in this case, 300. And the culture info would be relevant if we have to turn numbers into strings or date into strings, then we would have to respect the user interface culture uh, German, English, Japanese, Chinese, whatever. In our case, a rectangle always looks the same. So we can ignore the culture info. Let's use the underscore parameter name here to illustrate that we are not interested into uh, in the culture info. Okay. Let's do a little bit of data binding and I will show you how you can do that very elegantly directly here in C sharp. So we'll say if let's get started. First one. Let's convert the first value values index zero is double. So we convert into double and we will call this value temperature. So the index zero has to be a double value. And from now on, we call it temperature. Now the values one at index one is is double what did we say this is the maximum height in pixel that we get as the second value the target type has to be double we cannot convert into anything else we calculate the target height we couldn't turn it into a string or a date that would make sense. So therefore we check that SAML, that the binding is correct and that the target type is really a double value because this is, this is the only thing that we can really generate. And last but not least, the parameter is double max temperature. That's the amplitude here. Okay. And if all that is fulfilled, if we have a temperature of type double, if we have a max height of type uh, double, if the target type is double, and if we have the parameter, which is a double, then we can implement exactly that formula up here. So we can say return, what did we do? Temperature divided by max temperature, you see 250 divided by 300 multiplied by max height in pixel 
that's that one. And just to make sure that we really have enough space on the screen and we don't have a, a, a scroll bar showing up, let's do a dirty trick. Let's make things a little bit simple for us now. Let's multiply it by 99% so that we say we are not we are not using all the available pixels, but we are going to use 99% of the available pixels just to make sure that there is no scroll bar blinking or showing. There would be, you, you don't need that, absolutely. You could do tricks in XAML to get rid of the scroll bar, but this is a beginner course. So let's just say 99% is fine. It's a dirty trick, but it does its job. You see, this is exactly the formula that I showed you up here. And this is just type conversion, just to make sure that all the parameters are of the correct type. And if something is wrong, if we don't get a temperature, if we don't get the maximum height, if we are not turning into double and things like that, then we have to throw an exception, okay? Throw new uh, invalid cast exception because that means we cannot cast the values into the correct types. Woohoo, and that is our logic. So we didn't add this logic directly in the template in XAML, but we had to write it in C-sharp. And one of the most important things that you have to consider, whoa, what was that? Sorry, I did something wrong. Ha, now we are good. One of the most important things that you have to remember here, the reason why we do that is testing. Next year in the fifth class, we will definitely take a closer look at automated software testing. And by having it in C sharp, we can easily test this conversion logic automatically by writing an automated unit test. We already have looked into some unit testing in this year, but we only scratched the surface. There is so much more possible here. But this is the reason why we have it in C-sharp here. So this is our value converter. Please try to build your solution. If you build your solution, it should work. You, don't sh you should get no warning, you should get no error, and the type converter should be available. Now, our goal is to really use it. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of the height here. So the height is no longer necessary here in the rectangle. Let's remove that one. And instead of using it as a property, we are going to use the property element syntax. I hope you can remember what the property element syntax is because we already did that multiple times throughout our XAML work. So what we do is we are writing a property in element style, rectangle dot height. This is what we are going to do. And now we are going to use the multi binding here. This multi binding is this thing we are going to use. And now we have to specify various parameters for the for the settings. Now the multi binding here requires as the first parameter the current temperature that we want to convert. So let's do that. Let's give it the first parameter. This will be a binding and the temperature can be found in the field value as you can see it here. So let's do a binding with path equals value. That's the first parameter. This line here will make sure that inside our converter we get the temperature as the first parameter. The second parameter here, binding, needs to be a little bit more complicated because what we need here now is we need to get the height of the items control. The items control is the control in which all our bars live and we have to get the height here. One possibility, let's start simple, is to give this items control a name. So we can say element name sorry, name, just name, sorry. Let's call it chart. And then we can specify a binding where we say element name is chart and path is actual, actual height. That will give us 
the actual height, the height on the screen of the chart. Actual height. This second line here will make sure that we get the second parameter with the actual height of the chart. We will make that one more elegant in a second, but currently it's fine. Okay, let's do it that way. The last thing that we have to specify for the multibinding, we have to tell the multibinding that it should use our converter here. So we have to tell it that it can't just take these two values and magically a height of a chart bar will appear. That will not happen. We have to link together the multibinding with our converter. And this is done with the converter thing here. Now, how can we reference the converter? This is now a two step process. First, we have to create the converter and then we have to reference it here. And where can we create the converter? Again, something new, again in the resources. This is how XAML works. Converter are put into the resources just like styles. Don't worry if that is a lot of new things that you are currently learning. I have already checked in this code to your GitHub repository. And whenever you need a converter from now on, you can take a look at my code at your courses repository and copy it from there. Okay. So the converter has to be put here. And we do that by telling the system local temperature converter and give it a name by specifying just like here, a key. So X key equals to how can we call it temp converter. You can choose any name here. So now we have a converter sitting here in the window resources, being ready for doing its job for converting values based on the C sharp code of the converter. So if you check how we referenced here, the element in the uh, window resources for the style, we use the static resource and we will do exactly the same here. So we will again go here and say static resource and tell the system to use the temperature converter. You get the idea? So now we have said, take these two values and put them into the converter here. And this converter will generate a double value, which you put into the rectangle height. See it here. The very last thing that we have to specify here in the parameter is the maximum temperature that is available. We need that for our business logic. And this is done with another property here, which is called the converter parameter. And luckily, the converter, uh, the, the maximum value is available here in a constant value in our temperature sensor. So we just have to reference this constant. And how do we do that? Well, that's just a little bit of XAML magic. Just believe me, put it like that. It's not super important that you have to remember it. You just say static because it's a static value, local temperature, temperature sensor dot amplitude. And then we have filled all the parameters. Let's check it again. First parameter, temperature value, check. Next parameter, second parameter, actual height of the chart, check. Target type has to be double. Let's see with the target is the height and the height of our items control is a double value, check. Last one, the parameter is the maximum temperature. I called it amplitude. So here, check. We calculate everything and it should essentially work. Let's give it a try. Let's write. Oh, that looks promising. You see, if I change the size of the window, 
it still looks good. Depending on the actual size of the window, the chart is now resizing automatically. And this is exactly what I wanted to have. Okay, let's try that if we change the amplitude. So do the same thing that we had before. Let's change the 300 to 5, for instance. Let's run it again. Now we get values between 0 and 5. Do we still get? Yes, you see? So the problem has been solved. Now the chart is based on the ratio um, in relation to the maximum available height of the charts and it's no longer depending on the value range of our temperature sensor. And this is what our multi-value converter now solved. We can change that back to 300. The beauty of the design, let me put that again into context for you. The beauty of the design is that the whole logic, the, the number crunching is done in C sharp inside of that converter. And that converter has a clear interface. It has a kind of contract with WPF. I take in some values, I generate the target type, and I take in a parameter. And then in XAML, we can specify this multi-binding. Okay, it is a little bit complicated to set everything up, but at the end of the day, once you have done it, it's pretty obvious what we do. We uh, connect the multi-binding with the converter, we give it the necessary parameters, and we are done. Everything else is done by the multi-value parameter, by the multi-value converter. I will take a sip of coffee here and give you a chance to ask questions and catch up if you couldn't follow along if I was too fast. Okay, nice. Thank you for the question. We have solved this question. That's good. Um, and yeah, I think we don't have any other questions, right? Good, good, good. So we have learned a few things and we can enhance our XAML a little bit and then we will go into a different topic, okay? We, we will do a short break after we, we finish that one. Again, let's make 15 minutes or so and then we will go into the third lesson where you will um, again learn some new things and we will repeat some things. But let's, let's make this one perfect. What I don't like um, for, for the code that we currently have here is that we need to give this items control here a name and reference this items control here in this binding. You see that? I don't like that. Um, there is a better solution in XAML what you can do. Let me show you how this can be done. And this is very special in XAML. I'm not sure if you could do something like that in Angular, for instance. Let's get rid of the name. So delete the name here. We don't need it. But then we can't do the binding here like that. Let me write down the correct binding. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I deleted too much. The actual height pass can be the same, but element name is wrong. Let me write down the correct code and then we discuss it. We do in this case something new, which is called the relative source binding. Relative source ancestor type equals to items control. If you try that relative source ancestor type items control and you run it, you will see that it still works. Hopefully, let's see. Yes, it still works. So why does it work? And what is this strange relative source binding here? Let me draw a little bit on the screen so you understand what's going on. You see this rectangle here has ancestors. In German, Vorfahren. Ancestors in XAML mean that they have, logically speaking, in the hierarchy up above, elements which host this rectangle. And in our case, the rectangle is a child of the items control. The items control is a child of the window. And this is what we call ancestry. Okay? Because you have children. So from the viewpoint of the children, you have ancestors. Again, in German, Vorfahren. You have a mother, you have a grandmother, and so on and so on. And this relative source binding allows you to reference your ancestors, your Vorfahren. You can say, hey, XAML, walk up 
the ancestor tree. So go up the ancestor tree up here and find our ancestor Vorfahren of type items control. Now this is the items control. And from this ancestor items control, take the actual height. And that is exactly what we want. We are hosted as a rectangle inside of an items control and we are interested in the height of the items control. And with that, this works in any items control. We no longer have to give it an explicit name. The name works fine, it's okay, but this one is more generic. It's, it's clearer, it's more the, let's say, uh, it's more the typical XAML way that you would do that. Did you understand what I changed? I removed the element name up here and I changed the binding to something new, which is a relative source binding. Please follow along and try it if it really works. Okay, before we go into the break, uh, let's quickly discuss what is relevant for your upcoming exam in a few weeks. You definitely have to understand what an items control, a list box, a combo box is, I said that before. You definitely have to understand what item source is. You definitely have to be able to apply a data template and an items panel template. This is something that you have to understand. It's pretty simple. We recap that multiple times. This is a must. Using the correct usage of converters or even multi bindings will definitely not be necessary to get a positive grade. Maybe I will add a converter example for those of you who want to have a very good grade, but it will definitely not be a must understand and be, uh, be, uh, uh, be able to, to apply that. Something like a relative source will definitely not appear in an example. So we discussed that now. It is valuable knowledge. It is very often used in XAML, but I will not uh, ask you to write a correct relative source in the exam, okay? So that is something, remember it, uh, if you go into practice and if you do your internship this summer and you can, you have to implement some WPF stuff and you can talk about relative source bindings, you will impress your employer. So this is valuable knowledge, but not relevant for the exam. Okay, good. If we don't have any open questions and if everything works with all your code, then I would say we will do our second break now. The third hour, what are we going to do in the third hour? In the third hour, we are going to focus on extracting this items control into a user interface component. Because if you can remember correct, if you can remember, let me show you what we have in my example. In my example, I don't have a single chart, but I have multiple charts as you can see them here. So for that, we have to rip our, our chart out of the main window and we have to create what we call uh, a user control. So we have to create a user interface component, which we can use multiple times on the screen. So that is a thing that is mostly copy and paste, but that will be new content, which we haven't talked before. And additionally, we will restructure our application a little bit. So we have multiple sensor and that we can really see a nice styling here and, and nice sensors and a lot going on on the screen, but that will be not the most critical thing here. So the most important takeaway from the third lesson will be building reusable user interface components and ripping the code out of the XAML, uh, of, of the main window XAML. That will be the most important topic of the third hour. Good, we now have 10 minutes before 10. So let's make um, 15 minutes break. So at five minutes past 10, we will continue. Uh, and I think that we are pretty good in terms of timing and we will be able to solve everything what I wanted to show you in this lesson. If you have questions, I will be back a few minutes early before we get started. So no problem. Uh, we can chat about your questions uh, and yeah, take the time for that. 
With that, uh, enjoy the break, get a coffee, get something to drink, get the snack, whatever, and be back in 15 minutes.